Whenever I'm doing a live gig during the setup time, I always find myself using the signal generator with pink noise to set the levels of the speakers and the monitors on the floor and maybe a sine wave just to catch any problematic frequencies. For that, I need to have the signal generator and the EQ of the bus or channel and the fader of that channel. With mixing station, although I love it very much, it's just way too many steps to get into the signal generator. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a custom layout and a few very specific buttons and sliders and knobs to make your life easier during setup so you have the signal generator and everything you need the EQ the fader on one screen and you can get in and out of it very quickly with just one click of a button so this is my default layout I have a button right here if I click it it opens another layout if I click it again it closes that layout I can access the frequency of the signal generator the level of it I can turn it on and off I can open the signal generator immediately with one button and I also have access to the EQ of the channel and everything else compression sends insert and I also have the channel name so if I go to the main for example and hit left right right here this is the EQ of the left right and if I need to generate pink noise on something else I can click here and choose another bus to generate pink noise on and when I'm done with this I just click this button again and I'm out of it and the extra buttons are gone and I'm gonna also make this file available to download for free in the link in the pinned comment below so let me delete these layouts and start from scratch this is the default app I will click on the gear icon on the top right of the screen and go to layouts and I'm gonna click the plus to create a new layout now I'm gonna raise this a little bit make it shorter to make a place for a button and click the plus right here and go to general button now I will put the button down here and I'll click on it and go to settings and I can name it sound check layout and I'll keep this value I'll not delete it because I want to know if the button is on or off and I'm gonna go to the click behavior and add an action then go to action type current channel I don't want that I want app and then open layout and I'm gonna go back for now because I don't have another layout and I'm gonna copy this layout duplicate and in here I'm gonna say top menu on and I'll show you what this does I'm gonna click apply now I have another layout it's called mixer copy I can rename it if I want so when I open this new layout I still have these buttons of the app turn this off I don't have any buttons on the top I'm gonna edit it again go to the settings and make sure that top menu is on now these two layouts are exactly the same the reason I did that is to have the button in the exact same place that will open that layout now we can start editing let me click on the mixer and delete it and I will hit the plus then go to channel and channel view I'll put this here make it bigger and now I want to make a button that will open the signal generator page directly without going through all the steps because by default I would have to go to these three dots and then go to setup and then to signal generator that is way too many steps so I'm gonna hit the plus and create a general button and put it right here let's make it big click on it settings i'm gonna call it open signal generator and i'll remove the value because i don't care to know if the button is on or off because if it's on then i will be in the page hit okay and i'm gonna add an action under click and then in the action type i will hit app and go to open view and scroll down till i find console setup and then select signal generator so now if i click on this button it opens the signal generator page directly I don't have to go through these three dots, then setup, then signal generator. It's just one button, click, open. That's it. And you can do the same thing for talkback or monitor or the head amps. So it's in the app and open view. And then you get all these options. Not gonna lie, it took me a while to find where it's hidden because in my mind it, it should be in the console section, not in the app section. But anyway, that's where it is. Now I can open the signal generator. And the reason that I need to open it is just to change the buses because I couldn't figure out a way to make a button to change the buses without going into that page. But what if I just want to turn it on and off? I'll create another button plus general button, put it in here, click on it, settings, and I will call it signal generator and keep value between brackets, hit OK. So now this button will tell me if the signal generator is on or off. Add action under click, then go to the action type. Now console and signal generator and on. There's no other option anyway. Click on, signal generator is on and I open the signal generator page, it is on. If I turn it off, it says signal generator off, and I open that page, it is off. Now I still want to make a slider to change the frequency if I decide to use a sine wave. So let's hit the plus, general, slider, put it right here, make it bigger, click on it, settings, let's call it frequency, and add an action, go to action type, console, 
signal generator, frequency. Now if I change this, look at the frequency, this is 6.18 kilohertz, and I open this, it's exactly that. If I change it from here, turn it all the way down to 159, go back here 159 so that is the frequency slider from the signal generator page you know what let's also make a small knob to control the level of the signal generator although i will not change it much but if i'm using the sine wave i might want to turn it down a little bit so let's make room and hit the plus general knob and i'm going to put it right here click on it settings let's call it level add an action action type is console signal generator and now level. By the way, you can set a range. So I can say that I want the minimum to be, for example, minus 40 and the maximum to be minus 18. So I don't accidentally blow out my speakers. So I'm turning this knob up, up, up. The maximum is minus 18. It will not go any higher. Now, if I open the signal generator and turn the level up from here, it will go higher. But if I touch the knob again, it will jump to the limits that it has. So it seems right now that I have everything that I need, but I still need to figure out a way to select the channel that I'm adjusting because just scrolling with these arrows is not very efficient so let's make this a little bit smaller in height and i'm gonna click plus go to mixer and add the mixer now i just need the names from the mixer i don't want the faders and everything else so let's first of all make it a little bit bigger click on it go to settings and i'm gonna add a channel strip settings remove the fader and remove the mute and everything else just keep the name okay i have the names now i'm gonna click on it and send it to the background. So I have the channel overview on top and I just see the names. That's really cool. Because if I want to go to the main, I uh, just click on main right here and I have the main channel selected. If I want to go to the matrix, I click on it here. So I still have access to all the channels and the fader of the channel is here and I have EQ, insert, everything I need. But here's a little problem, just a visual problem. If I go to the config page or insert or whatever, you still can see the lines from the mixer. Wherever there is transparency, you can see the lines from the mixer. And I don't want that, it's distracting. So to fix that, I'm gonna click on the plus again, and now I will create a background. So go to general and create background, and I'm gonna cover this entire area, and I'm gonna click on it and send it to background. And I also need to send the mixer to the background also because I want to have the mixer at the bottom and then on top of it this fake background and then on top of it this overview. So let's see if I go here, this is covered now. It looks good. We still have one button to configure and it's the button that we created in the beginning to open that other layout and close it. So let's go into the layouts and go to the default layout and click on that button, go to settings and enter this action, open layout. And the layout that I want to open is not mixer, it's mixer copy. You can rename these if you're confused and you have other layouts, but this is the layout that we created with the signal generator. Now, if I click here, it opens that layout, but it's not working correctly in that layout. I will edit that button also. Keep it on that new layout that is mixer copy, but invert the button. So now in the first layout, that button is opening the other layout. And in the other layout, that same button is closing it to go back to the first. So this is on, this is off. And here's how you can quickly click a button. You're in a new layout. Do all the things you want to do with the signal generator, EQ, level, whatever. Then go out of it and you're mixing. Now I'm using this on my computer, but if you're using a phone screen, the fader right here might be a little bit too small. And in that case, you can move this over a little bit and create a very big fader. So I'm gonna click on the plus and then go to general fader. I'll put that huge fader right here and I'll click on it, go to settings, main add action, turn channel and I want it to be main fader. And right now this huge fader is whatever channel is selected. Matrix, this is the matrix fader, go to a channel, this is the channel fader. Okay, so in case on your screen, this fader gets a little too small, you can make that huge fader. And if I look at it on something much smaller, this seems like a good layout. I can see everything. I can still move everything. And this is what I mean. The fader is really small on a smaller screen. So that's why I made a different fader. Slider, level, signal generator on off, open signal generator. You can use that on your phone, honestly. Now I'm gonna save this and put it on my Google Drive. You can download it from the link in the print comment below. And let me show you how you can load it on your app. I'm gonna go to the settings and hit the folder icon. In the scope right here, I'm gonna turn off layers and MIDI. So I'm just saving the layouts and I'll click plus and call it a name, sound check 
layout. Hit OK. And now I will share it locally and save it on my desktop. Hit save. And so now let's pretend this is your app and you don't have these layouts. I'm going to delete them. You're going to go to settings and the folder icon and go to this up and down arrows. And then you're going to find the file that I gave you and open it. It says that settings are imported. OK. Let's load them. Yes. And now you have it on your app. Now you might need to tweak the size of the elements a little bit because on different screens it looks slightly different. But if you find this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and click on the video on screen right now and I'll see you there.